What's up everybody, I'm Jesse, or Game Over Jesse as some of you all may know me, and today we have a very special guest here with me, Mike from MikeTendo64, who some of you all may know, and today we're going to be talking about the very controversial Link's Awakening 3DS remake rumor that's going around. Uh, so for those who may not know who you are, Mike, why don't you go ahead and fill them in? Uh, thank you very much, Jesse, and thank you for having me on your show. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Michael Longman. I run Mike Tendo 64. It started off as a tiny little blog, which I put together trying to find news and rumours about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild when that was a thing. Um, since then, it has grown, it has expanded, and we've moved into news onto other Nintendo franchises. Um, we, our team has grown. We started off with me and just my brother who came to help me on the website. Now I've made him my editor-in-chief and we have about 25 different people working on our websites at any given time. So uh, I want to thank you all guys for your support of the the websites and also we have a YouTube channel as well when we're on Twitter too. Um, so it's you know, I mean, I come by here and there and I do the news and I do the general runnings of the websites. My brother, Jack, covers all the reviews and the features and he's an absolute machine, Jack. I mean, uh, he's an absolute <laughs> diamond and I'm very, very lucky to have him. Uh, not just as a brother, but to, to work on the website as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very awesome when family or even friends can come together and work on something that everyone's passionate about. Which kind of brings us... Uh, to the source or the main reason for this video, the Link's Awakening 3DS rumor that uh, I've been seeing people say some very positive things about it, I've been seeing people saying some very negative things about it. Now for me, the rumors started, uh, I started hearing them, I would say first from someone uh, who I guess has been the source of the rumors on my side of things, not necessarily the one who originated them, but the one who's been making the rumor popular, that Link's Awakening 3DS, uh, official remake coming from Grezzo. Now, Marcus Sellers, or I don't know if that's his real name, but at least that's the username that he's going by on Discord, Twitter, everything. Uh, so he came to me maybe a week, two weeks ago, something like that, uh, and mentioned this rumor. And I just simply dismissed it like, oh, well, it's likely that Grezzo is working on some sort of Zelda game. Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask did really well for them. And Ever Oasis did good, but not nearly as good as the Zelda games. So it would make sense that for their next game, they would go back to Zelda to kind of make more money and then use that money to fuel whatever the next passion project like uh, Ever Oasis would be. So that was kind of my thoughts. Um, whether that would be a port of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask to the Switch, uh, considering it's the 20th anniversary this year for Ocarina of Time. That would make what better time to celebrate Ocarina of Time and release an official HD remake. So uh, that's kind of where I thought um, Grezzo could be working on, unless it's Ever Oasis 2. Uh, but this rumor, uh, I've seen, again, people be very positive about it, saying they want it, and then people's been very negative. Now, my interactions with Marcus are slightly limited. He's active on Twitter, he's active on my Discord, some other Discord servers that I'm in, and people, I've seen people using screenshots from him, um, making it seem like he's the one coming up and making up these rumors. So I reached out to him and asked him about it, and he said that he had another source, and then he uh, mentioned you guys at Mike Tindo, saying that uh, someone there knew about it, and I was like, well, I know Mike Tindo, so <laughs> I'll just reach out to those guys. <laughs> so uh, he didn't necessarily say which one of you, and then that's when I messaged you guys to kind of get to the bottom of this, clear up any miscommunication, because as I was saying, Marcus is uh, a great Zelda fan, like any of us, and it kind of, it irritated me a bit when I seen people being that negative, lashing out to him, and I thought some of that negativity, because 
on his Twitter, it also extends back to Mike Tindo and some of the other websites that he writes for. And I didn't want it to end up being, oh, well, he's making up these rumors so they can have a clickbait news source and get some extra views on a video. Because that's what some people were alluding to, that he was just making it up. So, what well, are, what's your story? In all with fairness, this? okay. Well, in all fairness, I mean, there is no smoke without, or there's no smoke without fire kind of thing. Um, and Marcus is not afraid to do a bit of digging. I mean, uh, just yesterday with um, Sabre Interactive, they've announced that the enhanced edition of NBA Playgrounds is coming out. So the first thing that Marcus asked is, you know, is Shaq Fu still coming to the Switch? Which they responded to and say, yes. So, you know, you know, I don't think Marcus is just trying to do it out of spite or to try... I mean, we all are trying to make names of ourselves, and he wants to be, you know, the next uh, Laura or Emily Rogers, <laughs> you know. I mean, he wants to get his name out there. We all do. and yeah. But I don't think he's trying to do it, you know, out of just making nothing out of nothing or making something out of nothing. So, um as to regards of whether he's got an actual source that is giving him this information, um, obviously, you know, that's down to him and his sources. Well, he, um, he didn't give me a name, but he sent me a screenshot, which I made posts. Uh, it didn't have a name or a picture or anything like that. It, was, it just looked like a casual back-and-forth message where someone mentioned that Grezzo was working on a Zelda game, which at this point, I guess, for many Zelda fans, is kind of common knowledge or common sense like if you think grezzo the most popular things they've done is ocarina of time majora's mask they did ever oasis they helped on triforce heroes they uh i think they did the four swords Words. adventures uh the special edition maybe i think yeah for the 3ds the and anniversary they, edition yeah, yeah. They, and they've done a couple of other things so they've had a lot of experience with several different Zelda games, not just Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. So it would make sense that Nintendo would go to them once again, especially with the success of the 3DS remakes. Um, but whether or not that's Link's Awakening, and whether or not that's for the 3DS, uh, debatable. I know he has mentioned uh, a couple of times to me that... I think the rumor was originally that Grizzo was working on Link's Awakening remake for the 3DS using the A Link Between Worlds engine, which is what he said to me. And then he said that it was originally supposed to release in 2016, but because of the focus on Breath of the Wild, it was delayed, or not 2016, 2017, but it was delayed until uh, this year, which it'll this end up being yeah. announced and releasing later on this year since right now there's nothing in terms of zelda announced from nintendo so that kind of makes sense um personally i don't think they would really like it's a possibility they could release it on the 3ds but i would see it more of like a switch kind of thing maybe since they delayed it if they took that time instead of just holding on to it to release it later, yeah. if they just took it and ported it to the Switch, or in a similar situation with Fire Emblem Warriors, they released on the 3DS and the Wii U at the exact, or not the Wii U, but the Switch on the same day. Yeah. So they could possibly do something similar to that? They could, but I, I personally don't think it will be like one of those instances, um, which is a shame because, you know, I mean, I love Zelda. I'm a huge Zelda fan. Huge Zelda fan. Probably second only to you. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think we're, but, we're um, all pretty equal. Like, we all obviously have a passion for it. We, you, we all have a love. You, we all have a love yeah. for Zelda. You, you also have the infamously popular Zelda Facebook group. Uh, the yes, the Brigade. TBC, the yeah. Triforce Brigade of Zelda. I yes. mean, that's not ours personally. Yes. My brother is an admin for the, the group. Okay. Which is we've got about 25,000 members or something yeah. like that. It's a very, very big group. Yeah, I, I always assumed you guys uh, were the ones that ran it since they always post some of your stuff 
Uh, because my my brother Jack is an, an is an admin okay. for for the site, okay. but he doesn't just post our own content; he does post other people's content as yeah. well. A few and times it's run he shares about four well, or five, which is really yeah. great. So, well, there's a lot of love for Zelda, isn't there? <laughs> I mean, it's probably <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of love, um, but yes, I mean, Jack started thinking there was something going on with Link's Awakening, and this all goes back to around about June, September time in 2016 uh, when Hyrule Warriors had the Link's Awakening DLC and it's like why would you have these new characters come into well not new characters but like this new rendition of Marin mm -hmm. coming into Hyrule Warriors and then think not do anything else with it but then in another instance um, it's you know worth noticing or worth noting that it's actually Koei Tecmo that created the game but then why have this sort of inkling now of Link's Awakening? And yeah. since then, there have been another a number of projects trying to uh, bring Link's Awakening back to back into the scene again. I yeah. mean, we interviewed somebody a while back. Oh, I'm trying to think of his name now. It's Anderson right, so, something. Uh, for the people watching, and, um, people watching really yeah. quick, uh, I'm not looking up nonsense on my phone, ignoring him. I was looking <laughs> up the release date for. Ever Oasis, which was Grezzo's last game, which released, uh, it says June 23rd worldwide and July 13th in Japan. So this would have released around the same time. Yeah. That the, uh, the DLC and stuff for Hyrule Warriors came out, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that could have made them, I don't know, think maybe they could bring a Link's Awakening to the 3DS. I mean, I would be all for it. Not that I have a 3DS, but I can always borrow my brother's. Um, whether it comes to the Switch is another story, because obviously, you know, you've got Breath of the Wild, and we already know that uh, Nintendo are already working on another Zelda title for... Well, they haven't actually stated what console it would be for, though I, I suppose we could assume it would be for the Switch, because yeah. how many years does the 3DS have left <laughs> left in it? Yeah, well, that, that's the point that I've made, is that if you look at the 3DS in terms of Zelda games, we have Ocarina of Time 3D, Majora's Mask 3D, A Link Between Worlds, Triforce Heroes, uh, Hyrule Warriors Legends, if you want to count any of the eShop games, but for physical releases, we have five well, yeah. four Zelda games, two being brand new games, two being remakes, and then one being the spin-off Hyrule Warriors. So there's quite the lineup already there. Um, so with as many as there are there, you could look at it as they could just add another one, because what, six if you already have five? Or you could look at I mean, it as... Whether you know, they're making a whole new game for the 3DS... I don't know, but for another pull, I'd be all for it. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, it's just a game that they're bringing back. Even if it was the, just a virtual console edition of uh, Link's Awakening, why not? Yeah. Uh, with Nintendo's handheld team, which is, uh, for everyone, um, the, all the 3DS games were split between Grezzo and Nintendo. Nintendo worked on A Link Between Worlds Triforce Heroes. Before that, they worked on... Phantom Hourglass, uh, Spirit Tracks. Um, so between Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, there was... Uh, okay, so there's Phantom Hourglass. Two years later, there was Spirit Tracks. After yeah. Spirit Tracks, that was the last game, Zelda game for the DS, there was A Link Between Worlds, which was three years later, and then two years after that, Triforce Heroes came out. So if you look at that pattern between Nintendo's handheld console team... There has been two to three years between each release. Two exactly. years when it's on the same console, and then three years when it has to move to another console. And it's been two or three years since Triforce Heroes came out. So it makes sense for them to whatever unannounced Zelda game they're working on to release later on this year, if they follow that same pattern. But then it also kind of rubs up against with this game that Grezzo supposedly has. Yeah, it so, does. And this is one of the... Uh, well, I mean, you know, being fans of Nintendo, I mean, we're going to grab on to any kind of rumour that we hear. And, you know, we've got to tell ourselves, 
in our minds, you know, oh, this will be great, this is fantastic, or, you know, let's take this with a pinch of salt until Nintendo actually says anything about it. Uh, I mean, rumours are great, but don't overhype yourself on them, because if they don't turn out to be anything, then it just leaves us being bitter and salty, <laughs> and then we start taking it out on each other, yeah. and there's no need for that. I mean, now, share the love, guys. Do you remember the rumours for Twilight Princess 3D? Uh, it was like five, yes. five years ago, I would say. There was actually someone who hacked their 3DS to have it say that he was playing, like he had, had it made his own icon and everything, saying that he was playing Twilight Princess 3D. This was before Zelda Wii U when Waker HD was announced and everything. So it, it on his 3DS, he went to a convention, and if you did a spot pass with him, when it said what was the last game he was playing or whatever, it would pop up and say Twilight Princess 3D. Everyone assumed, oh, this is someone from Nintendo Treehouse or a developer from Nintendo accidentally left their spot pass on. So, yeah. like, there was actual substantial weight and physical evidence for that rumor to be true. Even though it turned out it was just, uh, like, a hacked 3DS that was uh, making its way around. So, yes. so, with this there's even less weight but we do know that nintendo is working on their own zelda game and we know that grizzo of course. is working on something um they recently put out what was they i made a video about this where it was grizzo mentioned that they were working on i th i think maybe you or jack one also brought this to my attention that they were hiring for an unreal engine project Yes, yes, it'd probably be Jack that's uh, brought it to your mind. Yeah. Brought it to your attention. Yeah, yeah so um, with them doing that, um, and that was kind of recent that they were hiring for the Unreal Engine project, which the 3DS, obviously, it, if you did run the Unreal Engine on it, it would be at like one or two frames per second. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, you got to think of the other games that run Unreal Engine. So obviously that would be for the Switch. Um, but that was a fairly recent listing that kind of made its way around when Ever Oasis was being released, which was their last game. It could yeah. be possible that they had part of their team working on this Ever Oasis game while the other part was working on the Majora's Mask. 3D remake, or as I said, even some of the team even helped uh, with Triforce Heroes. So they could potentially have their two separate teams working on their own unique IP while the other works on the remakes, which uh, would mean that there's even more potential for this remake to come out. But yeah, it. I mean, at the end of the day, everything is all down on rumours, and you have to take rumours with a pinch of salt. Uh, don't, you know, believe it to be complete fact. I mean, even on our website, the first thing we put on in every headline is rumour. So <laughs> if you don't want to click on uh, the link, don't click on it. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see what it's about, then please do. But like I said, you know, rumours are rumours. Take them as they are. If you're interested, that's great. If not, then, you know, uh, Zelda game is going to be coming to a 3DS. It's going to have to. I mean, the cycle, if we try to believe the cycle, you know, every two years, every yeah. two to three years, there's going to be a game. Uh, I don't think it will probably be a new new game, or it might use re uh, mechanics from older games. I mean, there was something on another rumor that says that there's a Zelda game called Boss Tracker. Uh, that's the Japanese name for it, and same again, this is one of these leaks uh, <laughs> that you can only take with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Only, this did not come from Marcus Sellers, this came from somebody on Reddit, uh, Darth Solo, so yet again, take that with a pinch of salt, so, so we'll just have so to see. If the Link's Awakening rumor turns out to be true, uh, they are remaking Link's Awakening, do you personally see it being for the 3DS, or do you see it coming to the Switch, possibly both. What are your thoughts on this? Because in the same right, way, Metroid Samus Returns came out on the 3DS, and then everyone who was like, oh, I just want a new Metroid game, give me a new Metroid game, it comes out on the 3DS, but instead of buying it for the 3DS, which some people did, then they just complained like, why don't we have a Metroid game on the Switch? And it's like, well, it's still there, you just don't want to play it because it's on a smaller screen. Smaller which, console, I mean, 
I, yeah. I mean, I am a home console gamer. I always have been and probably always will. I mean, I have dabbled in handhelds. I mean, I had the, the Game Boy, got the Game Boy Color. I couldn't really get to grips with the 3DS because it is a small screen, but I am absolutely loving the Switch because I can take it out everywhere. And because it's like the same size as the Wii U uh, gamepad, it's just a lot slimmer and you can take it out anywhere. And I am, I'm absolutely loving it. So I would personally love if Link's Awakening came to the Switch, though I probably think it will come to the 3DS. All right. that, so you, that's what I you, think. I, you would want it for the Switch, but you believe it would be for the 3DS? Yeah, that's that's what I believe. I think um, because of the, the type of game it is, I mean, I would love it. Or if they made a rehashed uh, like HD version of the game, maybe, sort of like set in the style of A Link Between Worlds. So it's got that 2D isometric... Um, look down but <laughs> yeah maybe for the, for the switch go on put it on the switch nintendo all right do you think because ocarina of time 3d had some changes from the original uh, majora's mask had even more changes they changed the location of the bank in clock town they put two fishing ponds in it when there wasn't even one to begin with <laughs> so they they changed we a love lot our with, fishing <laughs> They changed a lot with, and it's weird they didn't let us fish in Breath of the Wild, which has more water than any other Zelda game, uh, aside from Wind Waker. Well, they got rid of the, the, the claw shot as well, didn't they? So why have yeah. the, the rod as well? You can just dive in and grab the fish with your teeth now in that game. <laughs> yeah, well, you, yeah, it's just like, who needs a fishing pole when you can just <laughs> grab it yourself? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, with the changes with Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time that Grezzo was allowed from Nintendo... What kind of changes do you see from Link's Awakening? Because I think some of the original changes that they did with Link's Awakening DX, or at least the 3DS port that they had, um, every time you would change your item in the game, you'd have to pause it, and it would take like a few seconds to bring up the start menu, and then you'd have to change weapon. Sometimes you'd have to change your weapon two or three times in just a minute or two because of needing something very specific to get through a dungeon and then having to change it as soon as you get over that obstacle back to whatever you had before. Uh, with, they changed well, it. So with bearing that in mind, with bearing that in mind, it's probably uh, more viable that it would come to the 3DS because you have the two screens, so you could actually swap between items instantly much like a uh, phantom hourglass i think you know you can actually have the like the item screen on the bottom so then you can just choose the yeah basically with the item menu uh which you can use on the bottom screen i think will probably work out better for link's awakening for 3ds all right so you 100 percent believe it if it is true that it is for the 3ds not the switch i would i would say with that alone for changing items i mean you know, we, we, we've made leaps and bounds now in technology, so <laughs> yeah. it, sh it shouldn't take too long to switch between screens on the on the Switch. But if it's the case of easy, because of the amount of items you'd have to go through from different sections or different dungeons, then probably the 3DS is a better bet. The videos on this channel are funded by supporters on Patreon like you. If you're a fan of this channel and would like to join on videos, receive shoutouts, watch videos early, have your questions answered, or have your topic discussed on our podcast, please consider supporting on Patreon for these and many other rewards for just $1. Shoutouts for this video includes Link Use the Triforce, Rusty Caulfield, Lovable Christy, Key of Time 15, Shadow to Us, Robbie Morgan, and Lunarium. I want to thank all all of you for everything you have done to help support this channel.